All right, welcome everybody to the Northwoods Kindred Podcast. This is a very brand new podcast. We are starting it up right now, which is kind of the anniversary of starting our YouTube channel. So I'll get into all of that in a minute. But this is our inaugural episode, the very first one. So I'm going to be working some bugs out. I might have some glitches in sound or in the video quality. And uh, if you're not watching it on video, then yes, there's a video. It'll be on our YouTube channel, Northwoods Kindred. So go check that out. Uh, Also, it'll be on the RSS feed. And we'll see if I can post any video podcast anywhere else to keep this thing uh, upward, alive, and visual. However, it's not visually necessary. So if you want to watch it on YouTube, fine. But there won't be a lot of stuff going on that you have to be able to see. If there is, then I'll absolutely mention it to you and point you in the right direction where you can actually see it. So... As I said, this is our very first podcast, uh, and we're we're kicking it off here, brand new for 2023. So this is the inaugural episode. It will publish on December 30th, I believe is the Friday, so right in that area, December 30th, and then we'll publish every Friday after that. And it'll be kind of similar to, I think, right around December 30th or 31st was the day we started our YouTube channel last year. And now our YouTube's up at about 3,600. Our TikTok is killing it. We're we're pushing it uh, upwards of 70K, I believe, on TikTok. And uh, I'll get into all of that because it's really all of that's really important to the story of the Northwoods Kindred and where we're at today. So for this inaugural episode, since we're creating this whole new thing, I really want to kind of go down the the road of what happened last year just uh, a 2022 year in review for the northwoods kindred the the growth that we experienced the the people that we met the things that we've helped with and then how we're going to push forward into the new 2023 and see uh, what we can do moving forward and see if we can make it an even better year than last year so let's get into that <clears throat> so first off, if you're listening here on our RSS feed, go ahead and hit subscribe because we're gonna we're gonna maintain. And if you have if you've ever seen our YouTube channel, then you know that we will stick to our word. We're gonna we're gonna produce content just for you, and a lot of it's gonna be based on questions that you ask. So if you have any specifics that you'd like to have covered here on a podcast, even if it's just a story read or or some specific information about a god or goddess or a practice or or a technique. Uh, by all means, throw it down in the comments wherever you're wherever you're consuming this at, and I'll take a look at it. And as soon as I can, we'll put it together. We'll put together a show just for you. So one of the things we did when we started the YouTube channel last year was we we briefed the kindred. We got a hold of the kindred. We got everybody together, and we sat in a meeting. We're like, listen, this is our plan, and we want to kind of do an outreach. And we want to help people find their path. We don't want to teach people how to do it. We want to show people how we do it. So that's kind of been our focus a lot with the YouTube channel is just to show how we do it without putting any criteria on anyone. You have to do it this way and you have to have this and you have to set up this area and you got to do these ceremonies at this particular time of the year. I think all of that's bullshit and none of that really really plays into your own personal spirituality. But I think that uh, to show you the way that we do it and the, our UPGs, um, our you know our traditional practices or our historic practices that we that we've taken and modified to meet our modern lifestyle to show you that uh, I think is where the value is at because you can look at it and you can say I like that piece and I like that piece but I don't really like this piece and I don't really pray to the Norse gods I pray to some other gods or the include the Norse gods uh, you hear it a lot like I'm not exclusive to the Norse gods but you know Freya's my girl or whatever so you hear that a lot so if Freya is your girl, then it doesn't hurt to, you know, see the kind of things that we offer, the way that we, the way that we do business when we're um, making offerings to the Norse gods, because it may be different than how you offer to the Greek pantheon or whatever. Bottom line is everybody has a home here, and the practices we do are pagan and heathen practices. They're not necessarily exclusive to Asatru. So if you feel like it calls to you, then take those practices and run with it. Um, ad- adapt it to meet your specific needs and your circumstance and go with it and make it yours and uh, and we will everybody's better for that so that was kind of the the starting point for the kindred like that's or not for the kindred but for the kindred's youtube channel and we got together and we're like this is what's going to happen and we're going to film these vlogs uh, for each gathering just the camera's going to be kind of around here and there and we'll do a few tests for bloat and ritual and see how we like filming it which obviously if you've been around here 
uh, around the YouTube channel for the last year, you see that we've we've kind of found our own little groove with filming our rituals, which is really cool. Uh, and, and I think that people are getting a lot out of it. I get a lot of feedback from people. Hey, you know, um, I'm in charge of this kindred or they voted me their goatee and I don't even know what I'm doing, but thank you for showing us how you do it so I can adapt my rituals for that. I get a lot of stuff like that and that's really cool and it makes me feel good and it makes me feel like the, um, the effort that we're putting into this is actually going somewhere. You know, it's helping people. It's worth it. So the vlog is a big one for us and, um, we, we film you know, bits and pieces, you don't get the whole thing. Like there's a lot of camaraderie and, you know, sometimes there's some sticky situations we have to navigate. Uh, all of that happens at a gathering and you might not get the whole, the whole thing, but you get really the nuts and bolts of the gathering. Um, we adore each other. So it's pretty easy to see us having fun and, and, and festive and filming that. But the object isn't necessarily to show you our, you know, our practice 100%. It's to show you what it could be if uh, if you put the effort in and you recruited the correct people instead of jumping the gun and getting way too many people too fast because that's a, that's a problem that we see a lot. So on that note, what we did when we started the channel was we said we will not take any new members this whole year, um, which is a big statement. You know, 2022, you know, people are returning to the folk. You got new video games coming out. You got a lot of people who are coming in who are interested in the path and, and don't really know how to begin. And then here we are saying we're not going to take in any new members. So that was a little rough, but we agreed to it and we stuck to it. And we've had some good guests, some really good guests come by and, and hang out and, and attend ritual and, and various other gatherings and stuff. And uh, it's been really nice to have those people, but we haven't been able to, you know, bring anybody in as a full member of the kindred. So we're not going to make that vow for 2023, but we wanted to make sure that we had a, a position where we could establish ourselves, you know, in the Ossetru community as a whole and and not have people coming to us like we're the only game in town. Uh, so we really wanted to just close the doors on that. Of course, always train and help people um, meet for coffee, help them get their own kindred started, help them get their own things going. And that was really our goal, was to really help other people get their things started, not necessarily to use this as some sort of a recruitment tool to blow our thing up. So that was done. The kindred agreed on it, and we progressed through the year. We hit, um, I think... Probably our first month was really good. January was really good when we came out, out of the, uh, out on the scene, you know, guns a blazing, and we were knocking out a video every other day or something like that. We did this full series on getting started in Ossetru, which is really nice because it was about how to build your ritual kit, uh, how to set up an altar on the real on the cheap, um, how to do a bloat, just a basic solitary bloat, how to do a basic bloat with other people, and how to basically grow your own personal practice to accommodate your lifestyle. Obviously, our lifestyle isn't the same as everyone else's. We have some land here. We're pretty rural. We don't have to worry about neighbors. Uh, we don't, we could do, you know, live animal sacrifices if we wanted to. We could do all of that kind of stuff here. And I understand that not everybody has that situation, but everybody can do something to honor the gods. So that's really what it was about. It was about showing how do we do it without, you know, taking into account, you know, the, the fact that we have a dedicated space and a lot of people don't have that. But that doesn't necessarily take away from the practice that they could do. So that was kind of the point of it was just to show how we do it. We did the, the Asa True Basics playlist, which is really cool. I'll link that below um, if I can. Like I said, new podcast, bugs to work out. But I'll definitely link that down there and, and say... Uh, so if you're just finding this or you're finding this on Spotify or, or some audio source, just know that there is a YouTube component to this. And, uh, and a lot of times I will link to videos when I start talking about something that I've already covered in a, in a more detailed video setting. So definitely go check that out. And also in some of those videos, I've put links down in the bottom that are to some downloads. So I've got, you know, I'm not sure which ones are out yet, but I definitely have a handbook for bloat where you can just download it for free off my website and then print it. And then uh, you have this like little pocket guide that just kind of outlines a basic bloat structure so that you can take it and run with it and 
pen it up and make it your own and you know ultimately the goal is to be able to do it without any kind of a notes or any kind of a um, you know a handbook but you got to start somewhere I understand that and so I put that thing together and gave it away as a free download and that's linked in some of those videos especially the bloat videos uh, I think I did uh, a frequently asked questions like um, friends and family edition there's a, a video for that and then it's got a, a frequently asked questions flyer that you can download and um, if nothing else it'll help you learn how to answer these most basic of questions that you're going to get when you're asking you know when you're letting people know hey I'm not a Christian anymore I'm a Norse pagan now um, you know it the God's call to me I'm returning home I don't know much about it but this is uh, this is what feels right so far um, so that flyer's out there for you to download and print and keep in your pocket too it'll help and if you don't want to deal with people you just hand them the damn flyer and walk away and that's fine too uh, either way it, it should be helpful and I don't charge for any of that stuff so uh, we don't charge for very much at all we're just doing it in a lot of cases because I see these uh, cardboard Vikings these plagans out there and they're like hey take this course learn how to be a Viking take this course learn how to do Sidra and Galdra and learn all these little things that you know that uh, that they're supposedly these experts at and they're trying to get you to pay their way pay this fee to learn this thing you know come join this program and pay a couple of hundred dollars and we'll certify you as a Godi like these things are happening out there and it really pisses me off because these people didn't pay for any of this shit they didn't go to school to learn how to be a go they they learned it by reading and why can't they just tell you the sources why can't they just show you how to do it and then point you to the sources so that's where we come in it's like we're not charging for anything you want to you want to learn how to do this stuff watch our channel we'll show you how we do it just how we do it and, and in a lot of cases I'll I will tell you if it's a UPG if it's made up if it's an old family tradition if it's a new family tradition uh, if it comes from the sources and how I've adapted it to modern living all those things are going to be in there that's that's what we provide and we provide it without trying to get you to join some stupid membership program now we do have a patreon um, which is kind of a funny story we started that this year because we saw that everybody else had one and we thought well you know we might as well we might as well go down this road too it would certainly help with equipment and stuff like that so we we set up the patreon and we didn't actually invite anybody to it we just it was just kind of there. It was in our link tree. And we're like, well, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. We'll write this up. Uh, we don't even know what the tiers are. We'll just get to that eventually. We'll get to that eventually. And then someone joined. And we're like, oh, man, now we got to do this thing. So somebody just joined out of the blue on a small tier. And we're like, well, if they're on the small tier, we got to get it done. We got to get everything that we said we would do done. So we started doing it. And now we're up to uh, about 10 patrons, I guess, which is really cool. And obviously, uh, we have a, a little reward tier. They get, you know, some coupon code for the website, and they get, uh, depending on what level they're at, they get a little a pre pre gathering report, which is basically one of our tools that we use in house to organize our gatherings and events, so everybody knows what's going on. So we do this full um, operations order that says everything that's going to go on, who we're bloating to, so they can read up before they get here. Uh, what the menu is, who's bringing what. Like, it's a really full, detailed order, even all the way down to the weather report, just in case they have to drive pretty far or if they're going to camp out here or whatever it is, then we at least cover that so they can be prepared. That's all in the operations order. And then after the gathering, we do an after-gathering report, and we basically, it's just a more of a journal entry that tells, you know, how the gathering went. Sometimes things that are in the op order aren't in the after gathering report because stuff happened or things got out of order or we fell behind schedule. Sometimes we do other stuff. Maybe somebody comes with an idea in their mind and they want to execute it. So we have to slide something off the schedule in order to make that happen. So it's a really cool tool if you get both of those to look at the before and the after. And then, of course, one of our favorites uh, that gets a lot of play is our, our uh, monthly kindred recipe so our patrons also get a recipe from one of the dishes that we had at our feast because we tend to go a little overboard with the food here that's just sort of our thing like we really really love to eat here at the Northwoods so uh, that's one of the things that we provide is is a really cool recipe now there are not always Scandinavian or Norwegian recipes or or Germanic recipes sometimes they're you know Mediterranean or or you know some southwestern or there's you know there's always something 
going on. And sometimes it's a cake or a dessert. Sometimes it's a bread or sometimes it's a main meal. It's just, it really depends. It's like, what was the star of the show? That's the one we're going to give away every time. And we get them off of Pinterest and out of our family recipe books and all kinds of other things. It's, it's really just a fun way to interact with our audience, especially those that love to cook and eat. So there's that. And so, like I say, when I say that, um, we don't charge for anything, we do have the Patreon, but that's above and beyond. That's more getting to know us as a kindred and supporting us and our efforts to help other people. And that's our patrons know that. Our, the patrons that we have understand that they're paying to help us get the gear and the supplies and the stuff to help other people. It's not like they're going to get anything major out of being a patron other than, you know, they get to help us, you know, keep doing what we're doing. So we feel really, you know, a lot of gratitude towards towards our patrons for um you know, for helping us make this work and take the sting out of it so we can give away so much for free, uh, including the handouts and the flyers, uh, things like that. So, um, and if you, if you get like the after action report and the pre-gathering report and you look at those and read those and uh, bounce those off of the vlog and you see how the gathering was conducted and everything it really paints a full picture of of everything that goes into it and it shows that it's not easy because a lot of people think oh i'm just going to start a kindred and i'm going to have my friends over and we're going to play D and we're going to you know do a bloat to the gods and we're going to do this other thing uh it's very complicated it can be very complicated to actually organize a good gathering keep everybody on the same page, get the work done, and have everything, uh, you know, everything's clicking and working the way that you planned it in your head. So that's not always an easy thing to do, but uh, it is doable. So we can kind of take it to that next level with the, with the gathering reports and stuff like that. But you still get the feel of all of that simply by watching the vlog. So we're still giving that away even. And then we really like doing them. They're a lot of fun. But they do create, sometimes they do create issues within the kindred. So if you're thinking of, you know, starting a kindred or starting a channel for your kindred, thinking like maybe I'll create a channel and we'll show what we do and it'll help support. It's not going to support anything. Uh, and certainly, it certainly has cost more this year than we made off of it with, uh, you know, an Amazon link or something like that. So uh, don't go into it with that mindset. But if you go into it with the mindset that you're just trying to help people, you want to help them learn how to do this stuff, and you want to use the, the knowledge and the skills that you have, then by all means, start a channel, start a podcast, start a blog or a vlog, and, and help people grow. Because that's how, as a community, as we're going to bring Asatru or Norse paganism into this century, where people start to understand that we're not dressing up like Vikings and worshiping dead gods, where this is a real, living, thriving religion. Our gods are older than that. They're older than Christianity, and, uh, and we honor them as much as we can traditionally, but taking into account that we don't live 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. We don't live in the, in the Viking Age or the Iron Age or the, you know, the Bronze Age or the Stone Age, so we can't do things the same way they did. We do things our way because we live in a different, we live in an information age, um, and sometimes that's a curse. So one problem with being a very public kindred, as we are, is that it creates issues within the kindred sometimes. Sometimes people, maybe they say something that they don't want out there, and usually we got a pretty good system for that. You know, they're like, hey, we don't want, you know, don't say that. Um, and then we have, uh, if you watch our videos, you hear the crow caw, 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 every time anybody drops a cuss word. So we didn't have to say, hey, no cussing at the gatherings, because that's who we are. We're all a bunch of vets anyway. Uh, there's no way to filter that out. So we just dropped a crow caw in there. And I think people kind of get a kick out of that. So we did lose a member this year who you've probably seen for a good portion of the year and then poof, disappeared. Um, there was a little bit of, I don't know, there's a little bit of beef about the cameras all the time and this member thought that you know the cameras were creating this disconnect um nobody else felt that way so we decided that we were just gonna we were just gonna part ways and uh and then that member can go off and create a kindred and do whatever based on what he's learned here over the last you know three years and then he can start his own thing that's fine uh, and they'll certainly will help them with that but 
um, we're not we weren't willing to give up the the what we had created with the YouTube channel and with the TikTok and, and the Facebook group and our Discord. We weren't willing to give all of that that up because we feel like we made a commitment to you, to our listeners and watchers and, and readers uh, and people that we engage with. We've made a commitment that we're going to be here and we're going to show you how we do stuff. Not for a year, but for as long as we can manage. And uh, and we felt like it, to just disregard all of that and just shut off the channel was not very um it'd almost be like breaking it even though we didn't make a formal oath it seems like we had like an unwritten contract between us and people who are subscribed to our channels that um that uh that we would continue to provide good content you know in exchange for them coming back watching it so in any in any way it created a little bit of a rift we worked through it but those are the things that happen when you have a kindred you you problems come up that you can't foresee and you can't necessarily plan for every little thing in your life. So uh, those things do come up and you have to be, if you're going to start a kindred, if you're going to be the chieftain or the godi uh, or the leader of the kindred in some respects, you have to know that these problems are going to come up and they're going to require, uh, they're going to require a little bit of intervention on the part of the leadership. And by intervention, I mean, you're going to have to think on how to navigate a path without screwing anybody over because nobody really did anything wrong uh, it's just opinions change feelings change people grow apart things happen uh, so we did lose members this year but that's not new because prior to going on um on youtube we also lost members you know we would gain a member and lose a member and gain a family and lose a family and and it was just kind of always taken away there was always something keeping us at a very in a very tight group uh, as a kindred, there was always some something that, you know, it's, it's how it carved our path. Uh, our path was carved by gaining and losing members and uh, allowing things and disallowing things and changing our mind and changing our structure. And some people can adapt to that and some people can't. And that's just part of the growth process. Uh, Northwood's kindred is only about three years old. So we didn't even plan to initially... We didn't create a kindred just to do kindred outreach. We created the kindred because we missed it. Because Skogel and I have been with Gallahorn Kindred since 2001. Uh, and they've been a major part of our life. A part that we couldn't, I couldn't picture my life without Gallahorn Kindred in it. So to not have that in our lives anymore was, it was, I don't know. We just missed it so much. So we decided let's create something. So we knew a couple of heathens here and there. And we got a hold of them, and we created the Northwoods Kindred, and we built it slow and steady. And we really used some of the lessons that we had from Gallahorn Kindred, and we, as we were moving forward, to try and make sure that we could do, um, you know, keep everything civil and organized, and do everything slowly and incrementally in a way that allowed for growth. Uh, without too much because you know a huge population growth is not going to do anything except cause a lot of problems and we've seen that with some of the other kindreds and local groups that we observe around here so we got um you know that's kind of how we started and then we had a it was kind of funny it was more on a whim it was like uh we were talking about doing a, a q and a thing for tiktok and it's like hey how do we ask a question and then um, one of our kinsmen is like, mind go thee, da 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 because he's always like, mind go thee, mind kinsman, whatever. That's how he speaks. And uh, so he just did that, and then we thought, oh, that's funny, that's funny. And we're down in the kitchen, I was making a coffee, and my wife's like, mind go thee, what are the names of the dwarves that hold up the sky? And that was the very first one, the first mind go thee. And um, I'm pretty critical of it. Like, I go back and watch it, and I judge the shit out of myself. But that's the one, because as soon as that mind go thee went out, uh, it blew up on TikTok, and we gained, you know, thousands and thousands of subscribers and a lot of momentum. So we just started making these my these and started going from there. Now they don't quite get the hit that they used to. Uh, we have other kind of content that, you know, that kind of moves the needle for us that we found along the way. But, uh, but those my these were a big thing, and we're like, you know, people really need answers to some of these questions. And looking back, you know, I've been on the path for just under thirty years. And I got a, a lot of reading under my belt, so I can answer these questions. And I can answer these questions in an educated way that's a little bit fun and a little bit playful. And 
and not seem like uh, like some of these cardboard Vikings that are just, I mean, just literally answering questions with with Marvel information. And uh, and it, that was a struggle for me at the beginning because I just wanted to comment like, oh, you you know, you're wrong. You're you're full of shit. Like, where's that written? And it took a lot for me to even keep that little bit contained. Uh, but I'm learning. I'm learning really how to deal with people. And ultimately, my my um, philosophy on it is that if people are putting out wrong information, it's not my duty to correct it. Uh, it's not my job. Nobody ever asked me to do that for them. Uh, none of these people that are putting out wrong information even think it's wrong. So they're going to defend it automatically. So I've resigned myself to my job is not to correct the bad information that's out there. My job is to put out good information and show people how we do it at the Northwoods in case they want to copy it or take that and run with that. So that's really the ultimate goal is just to show how we do it and give good and accurate information wherever I can and let all of the other misinformation that's out there just kind of fester and float. And people, some people will see through it and some people won't. But I can't go to battle with every person that's giving bad information about the life and times of Ragnar Lothbrok or I, I just can't do it. It's, it's, it takes too much energy and, and I don't like the conflict. So if you don't know me, if you're new here, I'll do a whole video just on my whole path. Um, you know, we'll do, that'll be its own separate podcast altogether. All but basically, I, I'm a retired U.S. Marine. I worked, I was in infantry my whole time, um, eventually as a scout sniper, the scout sniper instructor, and then, you know, all the billets in a scout sniper platoon. And I've got four combat tours from Somalia, two in Iraq, and one in Afghanistan, and a whole bunch of teaching billets from mountaineering, uh, rock climbing, just all kinds of really cool military stuff. So I do have a history there, and I've also got, you know, combat experience. So I don't I don't have to wonder anymore, like, hey, you know, when my life's on the line, am I going to be saying, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, or am I going to be saying, Odin, you know? Just let me live the next couple of minutes well. And that's pretty liberating to know your response to that, that kind of a life-threatening stress uh, stressor. So that's a little bit about me and my past, but I'll give you a whole lot more later on down the road. So I just talked about losing some friends and some kinsmen on this journey. Well, we've also gained a lot. And uh, many are kindred leaders, go these chieftains of various kindreds around the country. Uh, I talk to on the phone. They join our Discord. We talk on Discord. We discuss ideas openly and honestly, you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of new ideas floating around the community now that weren't here 20 or 30 years ago. You know, we have arguments about about sexual orientation. We have arguments about political affiliation and, and all these different things, none of, none of which ever mattered to our ancestors. None of it did. Um, but here we are arguing about it. I understand that we're living a different time. So our social issues are different than the social issues of the day. And, but they did argue too. They did argue social issues one, two, and 3,000 years ago. So we're not doing anything different than them by arguing these issues. It's just when we try to attribute our personal feelings to that of the gods. That's when we have issues. So I like a platform like this where we can come out and we can be open and honest. And certainly on my Discord, um, there are no fights, there are no arguments. We will launch. We will launch somebody really quick. Now on our Discord, we have uh, we have just a vast. You know, we can talk about pretty much anything that's on the that's a hot button or a hot switch button for the. Ossetru community as a whole. We talk about organizations. We talk about people. Um, we can have a brand new transgender teenager, brand new to Ossetru, discussing an issue with a right-leaning Republican who's been in Ossetru for 25 years, uh, having a civil conversation. Uh, we won't tolerate anything less than civil conversation. We'll launch people really quick or at least put them on a timeout. Uh, as soon as it starts getting personal or it starts opinions and tempers flare over facts and actual working something out. So when it gets to that level, we hammer it. But it doesn't happen very often. Uh, the, the people on there understand why they come to our Discord. And they come to it to learn, to exchange ideas, and to not, um, not be in a vacuum with their people. So it's real easy to get on a Discord that's super liberal 
and live in a vacuum with all the super liberals or to get on a discord about Asatru that's super right-leaning Republican and then everybody agrees on everything and then no learning is taking place. It's just everybody agreeing on everything and then making fun of other people. We don't have that problem. Uh, every, we're really diverse on our discord. We, we welcome open and honest communication and when tempers flare, we time out. We don't, uh, we don't allow people's personal bias to infect the conversation. Uh, and that's probably a good way to put it. So our Discord is a really cool place to go. I'll link to that in, uh, I'll link to everything. I'll link to our um, link tree. So you can go to our link tree and you can find our Facebook and our YouTube and um, everything that's there. I'll put that in the show notes here. And if you're on YouTube, um, it's in the banner. It's it's up in the upper right-hand corner of the banner, but I'll throw it down down below just for good measure also. So definitely check out our Discord. Jump on there. Engage with people. Um, it's also, we have a Discord. There's a page on the Discord for podcast and video ideas. So if there's something that you're kind of yearning, something you really want to know about or you really want to get into, uh, by all means, drop it in the comment section there and then I'll take a look at it. And if I can make a video on it, I'll certainly do that or, you know, uh, or a podcast. So um, I already covered our patron, but I just wanted to kind of reemphasize that we do all of this for free. We do all this, we give this away, and nobody is required uh, to to go there. But what Patreon does for us is it helps me afford this recording equipment, that green screen behind me, the lights that are, you know, around. It, it helps me up the quality of production, and it also pays for hosting for things like Epidemic Sound, uh, whose music, I, you know, we scatter throughout all our videos and hear. Uh, even sound effects like the crow caw, that's from Epidemic Sound. So uh, Epidemic Sound is a big portion of this, and it, but it, it comes with a fee. And then there's other little fee programs that we get into for um, interpreting our data, for, uh, you know, keyword research, all these kind of things to try and make, not only make the best product that we can make, but to get it to the widest audience that we can get it to. And you can help just by sharing, you know, the podcast, share the videos on YouTube, go subscribe and ring the bell so everybody, you know, so you get notified when we have new uploads and and new information comes out. And what we don't do is I don't get into the piss and matches with other YouTubers, with other TikTokers. I've been down that road a couple of times and, and you know, <laughs> I usually just get rid of the, the video when, when it turns into a, a shit sandwich. Um, so we don't do that kind of stuff. We just kind of live in our own little bubble and we just try to show what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and whether it's traditional or if it's something that we made up or something that just kind of comes from our folks. And the reason that the, the Patreon is important to help with that is because we dropped our other pursuits. in order When we, when we started the Northwoods Kindred uh YouTube, uh, that page, and then we transitioned. Basically, we had a TikTok anyway. Uh, so if you go all the way down the bottom, you see a lot of stuff from like making knives and shit like that. So if you, what we did is we transitioned our TikTok to Northwoods Kindred, and then we basically just shut off our other YouTube channels because I had another podcast called Socially Disabled Podcast, and I think I've got like 27 episodes up on YouTube on its own page, and then. Um, but I killed my podcast hosting, so you won't be able to find it on Spotify or anything anymore. Maybe. I haven't looked, but probably not. Uh, but you can definitely see the videos are up on YouTube. There's about 27 episodes, and I gave up on that. And then uh, we stopped recording videos for our Makers channel, our Makers Movement channel, where we make knives and make leather stuff and you know pretty much anything, um, including assembling things we get in a box, whatever. Like It's just a, a channel for people who work with their hands. Uh, so we pretty much stopped that Maker's Movement channel. And then we even have a, a, a business here in our shop where I make knives and my wife does leather gear, um, lots of cool stuff. And that's Survival Hardware LLC. We pretty much didn't even do anything in Survival Hardware last year. Like I didn't even make any knives. Uh, so I want to get back to that. But the... Um, Initially, Maker's Movement was a big enough channel. It's 13,000 or something on YouTube. So Maker's Movement, maybe it's a little more by now, uh, supported the rest of this stuff. You know, we got a little bit of money through the YouTube Partner Program. Um, occasionally, I would get, you know, a, a little trinket or something to review or to check out or to use. And 
And so it it paid for and supported the program, uh, the you know the outreach and all the other stuff. But when we we canked all that stuff to start the Northwoods Kindred, so that's where the Patreon kind of came in to help to help cover some of the initial getting off the ground costs even though most of that initial getting off the ground cost came out of our pocket um all of it did actually but eventually people just went to patreon and and leaned into that and and so i said you know we're super grateful for that but that's why it's there it's not there because you're going to get some special information that you're not going to get anywhere else like i mean even if you're not a patron like i mean you can get me you can hook me up on discord and you can ask me any question and i'm still going to answer it it, it's not required. It's not a pay-to-play scheme like some of these other uh, things have going on. So, without beating a dead horse on that one, we we quit our, our basic works this year and put all of our effort and focus into the Northwoods Kindred YouTube channel and TikTok. And you can tell on the YouTube channel we've got over 200 videos and 3,600 subscribers and growing in one year's time. Now, that's not, you know, that's not fantastic. Like, that's not legendary status on youtube but it's pretty good coming out of the gate and just starting out so we're hoping to do a lot better this year and you can help with that by sharing this video or podcast or or joining the youtube and and you know sharing those videos out that really helps too and then uh one of the last things that we've done outside of all of that is our outreach so it's kind of an interesting story here um, we have an outreach with the Iron Ravens Kindred, and uh, they are our local kindred on the on our local Air Force base. And as far as I know, we we got something going on here that's unique to to this area, and that is we have a local military base that has a strong kindred. I think it's pushing twenty um, members right now, but it's not the same kind of a situation where where you can we can be particular about who we let into our kindred they have to click they have to have the same mindset as us we have to we have to agree on certain issues and items they don't have that luxury so chris the gothi over at the iron ravens he he has to accept everyone who claims to be a norse pagan or a pagan and uh even if they're wicca he's still got to kind of include them because he's the closest thing that they have uh to a spiritual leader it's not like the the you know the protestant chaplain is going to be able to help these wicca have a ritual but the the pagan godi certainly can so we have been mentoring them for well at least since the beginning of summer and the way we found them is kind of funny because we were on uh it was on a youtube not a youtube a a facebook group and the the leader here he put out a call on a on a facebook group and he's like yeah i'm in the area and i really just need somebody who knows you know kind of how to do ritual and how to do these things that that can come help and work with us and help us you know develop our our kindred here on or our group i don't think he even knew it was called a kindred on the base so he was relatively new it just kind of came to him um and and he put this call for help out and all he got was ridiculed just ridiculed and you've seen it i'm sure you've seen it if you've been on on any kind of pagan norse pagan or or heathen uh groups on facebook i'm sure that you've seen the ridicule and the mocking and the just the offhanded crappy comments and and most of them are like that at least the ones that i've seen were like that and uh and that's sad but You know, that's what it is. But my wife remembered seeing it because we were on the Air Force base uh, shopping at the commissary and doing some other things. And she's like, yeah, there was this guy on the base. And, boy, he got raked over the coals when he asked about it. And I was like, what are you talking about? So she showed me the the text or the the exchange. And uh, and I was like, well, send him a private message and tell him we're on base. And if he wants to link up, we can link up. So she sends him a private message and we... We go hang out at the coffee shop and no answer, no answer. And we're like, all right, well, I guess it's time to leave. So uh, I was actually stopping to talk to the chaplains on the base and, you know, just let them know that, you know, Northwoods Kindred is here in the area. If they have anybody that might need more information or might need help getting started, that we're here to help. And, uh, you know, gave them my YouTube and everything. It's like, hey, you can vet us or whatever. You can check us out. We're, we're legit. And then that was the whole plan was talk to the chaplain on the way out and then bail. And 
that's when Chris hit me up. He's like, oh, man, I was at the gym. Uh, almost missed it, but if you want to link up, let's link up. And I was like, cool, well, we're at the chaplain right now. How far are you? And he's like, I'll be there in two minutes. So he bounced over to the chapel, and we sat out on the front lawn under uh, under some really beautiful maple trees. I, I, I love that area. And uh, so we sat out underneath the shade of these maple trees on a hot summer day, and we talked about two and a half hours about Asatru and the gods and the practice. Um, and then we invited him out to our place for one of our kindred gatherings, and he's been at pretty much every gathering since. And he's used that information to grow his kindred. In fact, his very first kindred gathering or kindred ritual was done on the lawn of the chapel under those very same maple trees where we had that first meeting. And I'm sure, and it it feels good to me because I like that he, there's a history there. We We created a history and he made sure that when he did that first ritual with his people, that he included that as part of their history. Like, this is where I met with Godi Bodvar, and this is where we discussed building this thing. And now here we are out on the lawn doing a bloat on the base with all you fine heathens. And that's part of our history now. So um, so that happened. That was, that was a really cool outreach thing that we got a chance to do. And, of course, we're going to continue to work with Iron Ravens Kindred as much as we possibly can. And also work with other military pagan groups as much as possible. I have a a uh, channel on the Discord that's just for the DRGLs, which is the Designated Religious Group Leaders for the Military. So they don't call them Godies or priests or ministers or whatever. They call them um, DRGL, which is sort of a lay leader uh, position. It doesn't necessarily give them any authority, but somebody has to be in charge. So that's what that point is. But Chris, on the other hand, we're I say we, but I'll explain that in a second. We're working with him to help train him to actually become a um, a legitimate member of the Godar. Not that there's a membership thing, not that there's any kind of formal training that's that's very trustworthy. Uh, but like I learned to be a Godi from my Godi, who learned to be Godi from his Godi, and so the lineage is important and. The mentorship of it is important. It's a one-on-one -on -one exchange. So I'm working with Chris for this, but he also has the benefit of my of my teacher as well because he comes up here often. We blow together. We do ceremonies together. They know each other. Um, so he has the benefit of having two mentors, my mentor and myself, to help him uh, because it's the nature of the military. You know, I did 20 years in the Marine Corps, so I know that nothing lasts forever. So He's here now, and he's building the Iron Ravens Kindred now, and he's helping teach his people how to take over because he knows full well that eventually he's either going to get out or he's going to get orders somewhere else. That's just the nature of the beast. So he wants to get as much information as possible, do as much as possible, and build his kindred as strongly as he can so it can be independent of us down the road. Now, that doesn't mean that if he leaves that we're not going to still work with whoever takes over, but... Uh, the relationship with him will eventually change. So we understand that because being in the military, and it's something I really wished I would have been able to do when I was active duty. It's very hard when you're active duty and you have another role, or you're an instructor, or you're doing this, or you're doing that. They have all these other different things going on. It's very hard to incorporate your job that you're getting paid to do and also have this side mission of injecting this new religion into the government that doesn't really care about it in the first place. So I did a lot of what I did privately in my own head. I always wore my hammer, um, but my rituals I I did privately or I did them with my kindred off the base and out of out of the sight of prying eyes. I tried to get the ball rolling for that stuff. But every time I gained a little bit of traction, I would get orders somewhere else and then everything falls apart and you got to start all over again. I don't think that the active duty military are necessarily in a position to get it injected into the system. It requires people like us on the outside who understand how the system works that are stationary. It requires people like us to get involved. And that's why Asatru is now recognized. That's why they can... Um, they can have designated DRGLs. They can have a budget into a library and a room at the 
at the chapel just to store their gear or to do indoor rituals like a summel or a bloat if it's if the weather is you know inclement um that's why these things are available is because people have gone back not me uh, other people made that system happen so that it's recognized but now i can capitalize on that now that i'm in a position to help train the leaders then why wouldn't i want to help do that so that's really kind of where we're at with the iron ravens kindred and uh and our and our actual physical outreach. We also have some other people here who's either um, will probably either become a member or at the very least begin start their own kindred and then um, kind of work the same mentorship model with me and with uh, Gideon Skogel. And that'll be fantastic too. That we'll we'll start growing these other kindreds around here. There are other kindreds in the area. Some we get along with. Some we do not. Uh, some of them are a little bit more the Volkish Folkish side. Um, now, I don't want you to confuse that. I don't want you to think that I mean that they're racist, but they are certainly separatist. Um, I don't think they necessarily hate other people. They just don't include them. So there's a, there's a disconnect there that we can't get through. I don't want, I don't want to moot with people who don't include everyone that wants to follow this path. So... I don't know how else to say it. Like, we don't have any um, minorities really inside of our kindred, but that's not because we exclude them. It's because nobody's coming knocking. And uh, and for the most part, in order to fit in with us, it doesn't matter about skin color or sexual orientation or any of that stuff. What matters to us is, in a lot of cases, if you're not a veteran, you probably don't really speak the same language. And, uh, and we don't, um, probably one of the biggest pet peeves we have that have caused people to leave is that we don't, we don't want to meet with people who need to be the center of attention all the time. Uh, there's plenty of attention on, on the YouTube thing, but at a gathering, we don't need it. The gods are the center of attention. The food is the center of attention. Kinship is the center of attention. Um, and our attention jumps from person to person. It's never, it's not about me at a gathering. So when people come in, if they need to make everything about them, they generally don't last very long. Um, because they have to be the center of attention. That's uh, probably the only real sticking point we have with anybody. We've also dealt with um, we've also dealt with some pretty crazy people, uh, and you know some of that's on TikTok and some of it's not. But we do get the occasional "Hey, I want to join your group." Like, no, <laughs> like that's not how it works. You know, let's go have some coffee or let's go get a lunch or something. It's like I don't want to get a lunch. I want to be a part of your group. We're not open to the public. Like, that's not how this group works. That's not how this, you don't just join somebody's family. You know, we gather at my house in my, in my vey, in my yard, on, on my land that I pay taxes on. Um, I say mine, but we know the government owns it. Uh, so, because uh, they keep charging me taxes for it. So we meet some pretty crazy people too. And that's kind of the, the, the importance of vetting them by meeting out in town. But we can't let the crazies and the racists discourage us from following this path like this is our path this is our path and we're going to follow it and we'll leave the crazies and the racists and the and the center of attentions and and the professional victims and all those other people behind because nothing that they're doing or saying promotes the path to the gods it promotes the path to their own bias their own ignorance their own selfishness and that's not the path that we're on. We're on a path to the gods, to honor the gods, to honor each other as as kith and kin. So that's really the ultimate goal, and that should be the goal of any kindred. But sometimes, sometimes that gets distorted. It gets distorted by dirty leaders. It gets distorted by bad information. It gets distorted by internet conflicts. Everything starts to fall apart. So if you want to start a kindred, we're here to help you, um, but we can't make the decisions for you that move the needle. Those are for those are decisions for you to make and we'll help guide you as much as possible without judgment. So that's that's what we can provide. We can't provide a place for, a refuge for everybody who wants to join a kindred that's in the area. They can't all just come here. We can't support it. We can't financially support it. Uh, we can't we just don't have the energy to build a collective of 400 people. We can't do that. We that's not how. That's not what a kindred is. That's not how a kindred works. And if there's no vetting process and there's no way to 
prove that the people you're bringing in are good, healthy, um, you know, the people that, that, that they click with you. They got to be the right people. They can't just be every people. Every heathen is not my friend, you know, and is not your friend either. A lot of them will take advantage of you. They'll scam you and they'll be like, you know, heathens helping heathens, you know. It's, a lot of times it's just a big scam. It's just a big, um, it's a three-card Monty that they're playing and you're being drawn into it. So uh, I caution you um, anytime, anytime, that you're dealing with heathen stuff. With the exception of buying a product from someone or buying a book, uh, anytime you're dealing with them, if they're charging for information, you have to understand that the information they have is available to you for free. All of it. Um, there are vast libraries, digital libraries, where you can download all this information. You can read it and you can make a decision for yourself. You don't have to listen to the, um, the ramblings of a madman who read this thing and decided to twist it to meet modern socio-political agenda and now their word is the law you don't have to listen to that you can check you can check these resources you can check these books and you can read for yourself and you can make your own decision about how to move forward and how to honor the gods that if anything that's the real message to get across is that all this stuff whether it's a rune master or a uh this you know see that are uh which who knows everything about casting spells or whatever everything that they're that they do is based on one the same information that's available to you and two experience doing it so they have nothing that you don't have go read the books go try out the formulas keep what works for you discard what doesn't and then you have every bit that they're trying to charge you for um, in fact, a lot of what they give you only works for them. It doesn't even work for you. So don't play the game. Um, save your money. Keep it in your pocket. Uh, absorb all the free information you can. Make your decisions based on your own intellect and your own understanding of how the world works and how your, you spiritually connect to your gods. If you can do that, you're on the right track with Asatru. Um, absorb the free information learn as much as you can do the best you can on the path and when you make a mistake freely admit it and then just move on to the next event so i hope you enjoyed that this was the inaugural episode of the northwoods kindred podcast um i'm sure we'll go down a lot of different roads when we try to work out our formula and hopefully you'll stick around and you'll go down those roads with us you will be able to uh, enjoy this program as it develops into the future I'm Bodvar, the Gothi and Chieftain of the Northwoods Kindred. So remember, honor the gods in everything that you do, and they will honor you in return, because a gift demands a gift. Thor Vigi, my friends. <laughs>